uh, on average per match. Let's have a look at what Neil Craig might try and do. It looks as though McGregor will take one of the key forward posts. Fletcher will pick him up if he lines up in the sticks. They'll be hoping their resting Ruckman, Biglands or Hudson can kick a goal or two. It looks as though they'll have to pinch hit in one of the key forward posts. Maybe the veteran Ben Hart could face the youngster in Kepler, Kepler Bradley. Now Kevin Sheedy says that if Essendon can get enough ball inside the 50, they'll win because they convert better than Adelaide. So the midfield contest becomes crucial. Uh, Peveril might pick up the uh, hard man for Adelaide, Rusciuto. Then again, there is uh, Jason Johnson. What a clash that might be. And the ruck contest be pretty interesting. They both go in with two specialist ruckmen. At the attacking end of the ground for Essendon, well, they have traditional key forwards. Rutten's been a good young defender for Adelaide this year. McLeod and Hurd would really be something if Neil Craig opts for that. Bock looks as though he'll have another, another big job on Lucas. Now, if McLeod doesn't take Hurd, he might take the exciting and dangerous Andrew Lovett. He did pick up Stephen Milne in the match against St Kilda in Melbourne a couple of Friday nights ago. Laycock starting on the bench for Essendon. Adelaide going in with both Ruckman. Curiously, Perry, who's their second leading goal kicker of the year, with them uh, really short of key forwards, starts on the interchange bench. What's Neil Craig got up his sleeve? But what we know he does have is a brick ball across his back half. Because whereas last year under Gary Ayres in the first half of the year, the Crows conceded 95 points a game. Since Neil Craig took over, it's down to 81. And in 2005, the average scored against Adelaide per match is just 74.2. They're the number one ranked defensive team in the comp quarters. Thanks, Tim. And uh, there is Nathan Van Berlo playing just his fourth game of AFL football tonight. He is the late inclusion for Scott Welsh. Looking forward to a great game. The Bombers every chance of upsetting the Crows on their home turf. Uh, Libby's just ordering out of here. Thank you. I love you, Christy. You got the weather, haven't you? You got the weather? <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Now, sorry, mate. I was just listening to David. That was all. Hello. <laughs> Did that work? No. Okay, here we are. One, two, three, four, five. The others are uh, just arriving, so we will have a commentary team. On paper, it's a coaching mismatch. Sheedy has the experience. He has the record. And he has the know-how. But this is no ordinary rookie coach. His crows are defying the prophets of doom. Tonight, they face the resurgent bombers. And Neil Craig and Kevin Sheedy face off for the first time as equals.
Welcome back to Amy Stadium for Adelaide and Essendon. And two weeks ago, James Hurd was out of the Essendon team against Port Adelaide. He's back here tonight as skipper of the Bombers, but he's lost the toss and the Crows will kick to the southern end of the ground. The weather's not too bad here tonight. A couple of weeks ago, the ground was really, really slippery. A little bit of dew here tonight, but not too bad. Still no breeze at all to speak of and no sign of rain, which is good. Now, Essendon did lose that game. In fact, they've won only three out of 17 games outside of Victoria in over three seasons. But Kevin Sheedy says this year, the more they travel, the better they'll get of it. And they're hoping to turn around tonight. Yeah, and if you're a Crows supporter, you'd be bitterly disappointed that Scotty Welsh isn't playing. I can tell you that he's got a really bad cold. He trained really well during the week, must have copped the cold over the last two days. So Scotty Welsh not playing. Good calling, boys. Thanks, Mark. What do you reckon, guys? Is a change your uh, change your tip with Welsh out? Uh, makes it that bit harder because uh, he's their leading goal kicker, so obviously they'll miss him. This is interesting. Andrew McLeod going to love it. And we thought that might have happened. McLeod often starts games in a defensive role, then moves into the midfield. So the two aces go at it. Hill and Hudson. Ball spills to Goodwin. Little toe poke by Welsh. Only as far as the superstar McLeod. He puts it to half forward. McVeigh first and hits straight for the line. He's been pinned. Nice. So there you go. And go straight over the line. Yeah. Correct decision. They've just got to be consistent with it. Didn't disguise that one very well, did he? Jericho wastes no time. As he finds Thompson. Goes long. And in the end. Too long. It's a point. Scott Thompson, the first scorer of the night. Rhett Biglands, as we've seen, has lined up at full forward. He's kicked just three goals for the year. Not exactly an informed forward. Presumably he and Hudson will rotate through there. And Fletcher, a hard man to uh, conjure goals against. Some big leapers. Lovett Murray waited down and looked for it. a three, which he Some gets. Ball. That's it there. That's it. Stay there. Derek Woodcock awarding that, uh, officiating with Brett Allen and Martin Ellis. So an experienced team here tonight. Now the call comes from Bradley, who's picked up McGregor, who has lined up at uh, half forward. That is an awful left foot kick, but not a bad man on the end of it to have to win a hard ball. He can't find Bradley. Now, Kepler Bradley is a developing player. Up the other end of the ground, there's Rutten, the regular full-back, playing on Matthew Lloyd. Lloyd starting uh, near full forward. Cubido back in the goal square. Lost his footing a bit there, Kepler Bradley. Big and gangly. Hill straight to Hurd. Wobbles one inside 50. Lloyd's there. But it's well won by Rutten. And gives it to Bassett, who switches to the outer side and finds the Birdman. Brett Burton. Good, solid mark taken by McGregor. Well, they'll rely now on McGregor that Welsh is out of the team. Run provided by Buck, who goes long. The big fly. Birdman up was Jericho. Couldn't take it. Spills free. McVeigh. Over to Zantuck. And the bomber's out of danger. The loose man at half back is Hill. Running for him is McPhee, forward of the centre, tug rush by Bassett, a tug of the jumper, and not missed by Derek Woodcock. And acknowledged by Bassett. <laughs> Pleading guilty. So Adam McPhee, who has surged back to his best and fairest winning form of last season over the last month. Bomber's not a serious entry to the 50 yet. High bomb. Lucas third in line, Heard waiting down. Essendon won here last year against Adelaide, had a big win, but uh, the record stands at 7-3 Adelaide's way on this ground. Adelaide have never beaten Essendon away from Amy Stadium. Rather the other way around, Adelaide have never beaten Essendon away from Amy. Box stripped of the ball. Tawny. No chance. Bomber starting McPhee up forward. Bassett, his opponent. That's a good matchup because Bassett is strong in the air, and that is a real strength of McPhee's. He'll set himself for a few flies tonight, no doubt about that. Huge number of players around the ball. Well done by Hudson. Got it to Thompson, to Hart. Shirley over to McLeod, who's skiing through the middle. He has one bounce. He's run a long way. Oh, he's lucky there. He goes long into the fourth pocket. That's a great mark by McGregor. Outstretched arms. And what a 
wonderful bit of play coming out of the defensive 50 by the Adelaide Crows. Just a series of handballs. Some of them didn't travel much more than a metre and a half. Just enough to set a player up. And who better than Andrew McLeod, who once he got possession was able to run and bounce, draw the players to him, and then put it out wide to McGregor. And Ruddy did. About 18, I reckon. <laughs> Strides, that is. Oh, he's allowed a couple of extra. So Ken McGregor, wonderful mark. He's kicked three goals, five for the season. He's 45 out. Tight angle. He stabs at it. It's a beauty. It's a goal. Crows get the first of the night. It wasn't the purest of kicking actions, but it was nevertheless very effective. Look at this. After the bounce, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty for the... I don't think I could count as quickly as his legs were moving. That was a great mark. It was. Sticky fingered. Ken McGregor kicks the first goal of the night. His profile in this weekend's record, if he had three wishes, he'd wish for pace, peace, and worldwide acceptance of other cultures. I'm glad he kicked the first goal. Rose again, Tawny's in the front half of the ground. Burton now, that's a good ball for Thompson, who missed with the first shot of the night and is a bit reluctant here. Now he goes, and does he go? Don't know why, he just didn't go back and have a shot. Did it easily, didn't he? He did, and this is the sort of start obviously they would, would have wanted. Don't let Essendon get away to a good start. The Bombers, amazingly, are the best first quarter team in the competition. They're the worst fourth quarter team. Early problems for Kevin Sheedy. It's a full house at Amy. Kevin Sheedy worried about Lovett. You can see Hart's gone back onto Lovett. Lovett's been told to get way out of the way, go down to the goal square. McLeod didn't go with him. McLeod stayed out at half back for the Crows on Cubido. Stanton, long ball inside 50. Back of the pack. Here's a chance for the man in question. Lovett can't get the kind bounce. Yes, the runner came out to uh, Andrew Lovett and said, play deep in the forward line, try to get McLeod out of the action. And you can see McLeod in picture. He's now picked up Cupido left of screen. Chance here for the Bombers to stem the flow. It'll be Hudson against Hill. Hill smashes it to the tip of the goal square. McLeod's there. Did it nicely. Oh, very dangerous by Hart. He should have known better. And he's paid the price. Bad mistake. Gee, that was a shot for a player of his uh, experience. Maybe just didn't see his opponent. And Essendon had kicked the goal through Cupido. Just turned back into head traffic, didn't he? He did. And good pressure there by Lovett. He got the smother, the rebound going to Cupido. Cupido put the tackle on in the first place, which was handy. So the two smaller Essendon forwards working hard together to get their first goal. Just not the percentage play though, Robert, was it? No, it wasn't. And what price is he paying? Well, age waits for no man. Ben Hart's been around many years. He's not quite what he was. Still a, a diligent and fine player, but uh, it's a mistake he wouldn't have made at the prime of his career. Hudson did well. Ruck, rogue and blazed. Bounce was always going to go anywhere. McGregor pulled, didn't have it. It's his ball. Now, is it going to be play on? Looks as though it is. Goodwin on his natural side. The Crows have their third. I'll tell you what it was too, Rob. It was great umpiring to let it go. It was. It was. Derek Woodcock, the man in question, deserves to be nominated. Yes, and uh, Kepler Bradley just held on too long with the tackle. Free kick against him. Umpire saw it. Bandage opening up for the Crows. Goodman on his left foot. He was never going to miss that. They've 
Adelaide certainly knowing that the Bombers, the best starting team in the competition, they wanted to knock that on the head early. Well, they've done it with three quick goals. Amazingly, Essendon the best early, the worst in the fourth quarter. What about that for a handball from Rusciuto? But it went to an opposition player in Welsh. He was under pressure. Nice kick to half back. Bombers got the extra man. Jason Johnson can't keep it alive. Look at the Rusciuto handball. So, centre wing is the football. Good win again. The hard ball get on the left. Penetrating kick deep inside 50. The good use of the body by Zantuck. And he's dished off to Welsh and now to Fletcher. Well, he's got to come back because there's very little out on that flank. Back to Welsh and Hurd on the ball now. Love it, Murray. Crows were only meant to kick about three goals before half time with the team they've put on the field tonight. They've yeah. got three in about six or seven minutes. McPhee. Here's Love it. Bassett against him. Oh, he took him under the ball. Just about a push in the back. McVeigh now for Essendon. Clever for Lloyd. Less than 20 metres out, slight angle. This shouldn't represent a problem for the Essendon spearhead. Well, just smart play. Hook it back to the dangerous spot. That's what they've been told to do since they started their careers. And Matthew Lloyd just needs to put it through. You'd expect he wouldn't miss this one. Interesting, McLeod has had three opponents already. As soon as he lines up on an Essendon forward, that Essendon forward heads to the goal square. He had Lovett in the first couple of minutes. Then he had Cupido. Now he's out playing on a halfback flank on McPhee, who's much taller than him. Kevin Sheedy would be happier than with that matchup. Important kick for Lloyd. No mistake. I wonder if this had been away from goal, whether the umpire would have contemplated 50, not that it matters. Matthew Lloyd took the mark and the fact that he was held up by being flattened didn't matter. But if it had been up the ground where time was important, it might have been worth 50. Raining goals, isn't it? Five in the first uh, nine minutes of the game. Entertaining start. Oh, they they well know done. Wolsey's here. <laughs> <laughs> well done by Hill. Stanton overrun it. Now picked up by Jason Johnson. Wonderful smother. And the Crows are away. Bock puts it back inside 50. Jericho couldn't get there. Zantuck did well to tap it out. Now Welsh another stat as he goes short and finds Hill. Pops it over the top to Lucas. Touched off the boot. Forces the turnover. Tawny concedes some ground. Back to Edwards. Crows build again. That was Skipworth. Now he receives again. Forced to U-turn. High ball into the pocket. There's a loose man here for the Crows. Jericho underneath it. Couldn't hang. take the muck. Rusciuto tries to bust the pack. Welsh is stripped of the football. Ball got not clear. You're the ground. Clear free kick. The ball not clear. You're the ground. Thompson was the offender. Six disposals already to, well, five and now six to Andrew Welsh. The one Welsh playing tonight with Scott out of the Adelaide lineup. Oh, Jason Johnson's kick left the bombers exposed. Edwards shoveling it. Essendon defence converges. And there's Andrew McLeod back on Lovett. So uh, a game of cat and mouse being played by these two. Brett Allen bounces the footy. Hill and Biglands this time. Skipworth, Edwards. Nowhere to go. Matna, non-preferred side. Good position. Jericho, well played Welsh. Peveril, Bonner's safely away. Seven touches for Welsh. As Peveril's kick finds Hill. Off to Stanton. Who dashes through the middle. Long kick, it's a penetrating kick. It sets up Lloyd. 
couldn't hang on to it. Rutten works overtime. Spills to Hart. Quick toe poke was good. Tawny under pressure. Squeeze the handball out to Edwards. Trevor kick to the wing. Hurdle stop it. He sells the dummy beautifully to McGregor. Kicks to half forward. Into open spaces. McPhee taps it on. Matna stood up in the tackle to Tawny. To McLeod. This game being played at a frantic pace. Hudson releases back to McLeod. And the champs away again. He has two bounces. Thomas gives chase. He kicks it out wide. Here's a chance for Thompson. Welsh is well shepherded. Gives Thompson just that little bit of extra space. Now Bassett from on the 50. Has he got the carry? Kept alive. Well played by Kepler Bradley. And now a throw in. Gee, it's a great opening, isn't it? Gee, it's quick, it's fast, they're playing on, they're taking risks, it's exciting stuff. Cool, goal umpire in perfect posse. So you'd imagine the call is quite right. Good deep throw in, and Laycox, the only man there, he's just come off the bench. But Goodwin's camped under his kick. So the Crows build again. Bigland's told he has to play on, it wasn't 15. Perry's on now, and he's got to be lining them up. And well protected, well, well protected by his teammate there. It was Jericho. And you'll be able to see as this ball comes in, Fletcher has his path blocked. The wall of Jericho. By <laughs> Jericho, and Fletcher is complaining to the umpires, saying, I was shepherded out of the contest. Adelaide's fourth goal. who started in a key forward post. Perry out there now to occupy the one that he's vacated. And they've combined to give Adelaide a 13-point lead. Center breaks Adelaide 5-1, and that's one of the reasons why they're ahead on the scoreboard. Just what? weight of numbers crashing through there by 13 points now two bombers uh, Polak's the teammate there he's getting up off the bottom Solomon nice tap by Laycock but Rashido got the spoils Adelaide go back inside 50 Bradley under pressure got it to Zanta to Stanton now Rashido, bang! She lines up Laycock, they both get up. Thompson, over to Bock to half forward. And the sliding mark's taken by stay Mark Johnson. Thompson, stay there, stay there. Well, Laycock took that bump well, because at the last split second, Rashido knew there was only one thing left, and that was to put a hip and shoulder into him. High ball, difficult one to Mark Hood. Works his way to the front. Hacked out of mid-air by Burton. To half forward, Stanton kept his feet. Having a good first quarter. Heard in space now. He'll use the footy. And he does for Winderlich. Moving for him, Solomon. Play on the call. He only shaped the hand pass. Heard gives it to Solomon. Made a mess of it. Hands full cover. Goal. See, the tackling's good to Crows. Costly fumble. Bassett wraps him up. Can't get the handball away. Definite free kick. Good decision. Holding the ball can be contentious in the opinion of some but uh, that was a good decision they're playing Burton on a wing Tim and he's on Lovett Murray and they're playing through him a lot as they bring it out of the back half for Crows because he's such a good player in the air this match really has the makings Essendon came here two or three weeks ago and played well going down to Port Adelaide I wonder uh, who is the tougher opponent Port that night or the Crows tonight here's a steal Thompson poking it forward. Jericho's there and Perry. The bounce beat them both. Zanta. Lucas having to work into the back half. Bombers don't want to concede another goal. 
just now, trailing by 13 points. Neither of these are really free scoring teams. Love it back to Lucas as the Bombers build slowly. Interesting, Rob, the Rusciuto off just a couple of touches in this first quarter. Yes, yeah, they give him a spell most quarters. You can see the Essendon forward line pretty open. McPhee deep back in the goal square. Lucas and Lloyd well out. Oh, Mark Johnson's free. Receives from Jason Johnson. The short's on to her. Yeah, Jason Tawney is playing on James Hurd, following Hurd wherever he goes, whether Hurd plays wing into the forward line or Ruck Groves into the back line. And uh, Jason Tawney, a pretty experienced player now, just has to tighten up. Seven goals, five assists to Hurd, who misses everything. So it's the Crows by two straight kicks. Thompson's got eight touches for Adelaide. Welsh seven and Hurd seven for Essendon. Ben Hart might be pretty careful about this. Uh, he does okay here. He goes for Bock and scouting the pack, Matner, but uh, Stanton covered him and covers the ball and did well, played the percentages. McLeod keeping it alive momentarily. So it's the Crows by two goals, two thirds of the way through the opening term. A big night, a win to Adelaide and they really consolidate their position. Probably be in the top four. Play on! Essendon really can't afford to lose. There'll be two games and percentage out at halfway. Hard to make the finals from there. Another throw in. Yeah, Tom's has been a good player for the Crows since uh, coming across from the Demons. Hard, strong body in the midfield. It, uh, it certainly complements Rusciuto and Goodwin. Still only 22 on. is Scott Thompson. Playing game number 49 tonight. No. Well, it said 39 of those with Melbourne. They don't mind it in close like this. In, in, in the uh, stoppages, plenty of bodies around the ball. They're a pretty experienced team in the midfield, the Adelaide Crows. Biglands, nicely to Riley. Thompson, another possession. Back to Riley. Squares it up. It's a good kick. McGregor couldn't hang on to the mark. Jericho. A lost opportunity there for the Crows. Zanta has the no ball chance. pinned to his chest well, it, was quarters. It, it looked like a certain McGregor mark after Kepler Bradley slipped over did he go for the arms having recovered from his slip I wonder well, well I think McGregor just dropped it he should have held it it just looked like it was an obvious mark Adelaide close to goal Biglands trying to work it clear of the pack Jason Johnson takes it the other way Biglands McGregor Skipworth wanting to get onto his left it's a bit slippery out there, a bit treacherous. Solomon. Hasn't got it. Essendon free kick. Certainly yeah, handballing a lot for the Adelaide Crows. 35 handballs to Essendon, 16. Bombers more inclined to use the short kick than the hand pass. Welsh all dangerous for Stanton. Yep. And forced the error. Matner is a left footer, but he just couldn't get himself balanced. Perry to Burton. Did the right thing there because had he kicked long, there were three Essendon players back near the goal square and they would have just gobbled that kick up. So he did the right thing, just gave the little chip pass. Now, can the Birdman go the distance? Well, he used to be a high flying forward who kicked some goals. Got to be a long one here from outside 50 with the man on the mark about 49 metres out. The Shuto and Hudson back on for the Crows. Biglands and Shirley having a break. And Christy changes down there. Chupido's come off. He's having a bit of work done on his lower back. It looks like they're just giving it a bit of a rub. Not, nothing too serious. He's done it. And the Crows lead by three goals. Bad mistake by young Brent Stanton. He was... Just put under pressure with the man closing fast. Burton it was who was applying the pressure and in the end he got the reward.
best first quarter for the year for the Adelaide Crows. Their previous best was 4-5 against Collingwood back in round two. Jason Tawney off. He's the shadow for uh, James Hurd. And you can see Tyson Edwards, number nine for the Crows. He's got the job on Hurd now. And they're 15th in the competition with accuracy at 54%. They're doing much better than that in the first term. As they build again, Doherty to Riley. Squares it up. Lucas with the spoil into the forward pocket. A rush behind. What, what they're doing, Court, is this uh, Adelaide team, they're playing on it every opportunity through the middle. They are just playing on and moving it as quickly as they can. They don't mind taking it out wide to the wing, but then the player who receives will then accelerate, straighten up and put it uh, at the full forward spot. They have dominated this opening quarter. They've been inside their 50 15 times to 7. And they've reaped the reward. Lucas, that thumping kick. Lloyd, a big leap. His opponent rut and weighted down to good effect. McLeod now. Goodwin. Rusciuto. Adelaide playing with a load of confidence. Right, and yeah. this is good. So Jerry Coe can line them up. And another long kick, Tim. Adelaide, when they do get clear, they are going longer than the Bombers by foot. Adelaide Crows are having plenty of long kicks compared to their short ones. Essendon, on the other hand, particularly as they bring it out of their back line, are just going short with the chip kicks, which you call. 25 to 11 in long kicks, favouring Adelaide at the moment. Five individual goal kickers. Can Luke Jericho make it six? Again, it needs to be long. It is very long, and it is very straight. Their goal kicking has been outstanding. Series of long shots. Thompson, Burton, Jericho, all from outside 50. That's the kick. That's a 50 metre pass. Hard, long and low. The Rusciuto kick to Jericho. And James Hurd pushing into the Essendon forward line. There's the clearances overall for this quarter, 11 to 5. Well, pretty much everything going right for the Crows in this first quarter, apart from an uncharacteristic mistake from Ben Hart. Block with the arm, Essendon free kick. Take the arm out to block him. Kevin Sheedy made a, a pretty dramatic move here. He's moved McPhee into the back line and Kepler Bradley has gone forward. Great kick from Laycock, finds Hurd, and take the mark, Solomon with a bit of muscle. To not much effect as the Crows are away again through Goodwin. And there's McPhee in picture, well there's Hurd now who's playing across the half forward line. And Goodwin has gone with him, just about a mark, a mark. Yeah. just about a mark Tim. Yep. Or a three, I mean there is oh, contact, clearly a mark. Clearly a mark. And McPhee now playing at centre-half back on McGregor. Not a murmur from James Hurd. Just gets on with the job, doesn't waste energy. Skip with trip, surely. Yes. Adelaide free kick. Now that is just about 50. Ooh. Paul Thomas flirting with fate. And now he's over the mark. <laughs> Oh, he's very lucky not to get 50 out of all of that. He's Double push, jeopardy. Pushing his luck, isn't oh. he? Essendon have got a huge flood on in their back line. Not one, or just one Essendon player in their front half, and that's Bradley, who's at full forward. In the last two minutes, they don't want to concede another one. Hudson off, Perry uncontested. Essendon's flooded defence in disarray. They were all the fight was in no man's land, though. Yeah, and the, the players who were flooding were within... 25, 35 metres of the kicker. Hudson, he's decided I'll go for the long kick and it's a beauty. And again, the long kicking of the Crows has been to their definite advantage. Long and direct, Rob, not oh, going too wide. I love it, Tim. I love it. I'm happy. Perry to break the sequence of singles. It was a horrible kick, but it's done the job. He has two. You say that's the worst goal I've ever seen? <laughs> well, well, it's a great kick. 
You saw the worst kick for goal you'd ever seen at this ground from Ty Zantuck, That's I think, right. did you? Yeah. I guess it doesn't matter as long as it goes through. Let's have a look at it. This is what it's in cricket. Doesn't matter how, it's how many. That's right. He just kept it low. Kevin Sheedy now forced to come down before quarter time these days because of his hip operation. And gee, what a first quarter it's been by Adelaide. Couldn't be more impressive. And here they come again through Burton to half forward. Almost to Skipworth. Ooh. Ooh, Solomon went in hard. Pilots out! Line now! Thanks, guys! Thank you. Here he is. The Sphinx. Lucky enough to give away a free kick there, Dean Solomon. Umpire caught on the blind side. Inside 50 is just the domination. 17 to 7. That is, 7 is just extremely low for a team to play a quarter. <laughs> they got picked uh, like a little puppy. Up, like a pup, wasn't he? Get out of the way. And skidded him across the ground. The ball's on you, it's in possession. Thanks, Tyson. Have a look at this. Here's McLeod. To the 50. Oh! McClay takes a hair! That is going to look even better when we show it a little bit well, later. I'll tell you what, it was right in front of the photographer too. He was standing on the head. <laughs> not supposed to do it at that end of the ground, are you? Oh, oh, that was a cracker. Have a look at that. Oh. And that's what makes the game great. McVeigh over McPhee. Sensational. It was. And see, speaking of sensational, the Crows, their best first quarter of the season, Robert, they were tremendous. They were just awesome. They just had the power in the midfield. They dominated the clearances. They kicked the ball long when they took clean possession and they mixed it up in their forward line. They've had one, two, three, four, five, six goal kickers already. Who said football was boring, Robert Walls? This is magnificent. Hello, hello. was always going to go anywhere. McGregor pulled, didn't have it. It's his ball. Now, is it going to be play on? Looks as though it is. Goodwin on his natural side. The Crows have their third.
was always going to go anywhere. McGregor pulled, didn't have it. It's his ball. Now... And they went on to kick four more goals. What a fantastic quarter of football by Adelaide. 7-2 plays 2-1. Perry's the only multiple goal scorer in the game. Thompson nine touches. Burton McLeod, who was fantastic through the midfield, got eight. The clearances 13-6 overall in favour of the Crows. Centre clearances 6-1. That's one of the reasons for their dominance, as well as their good conversion rate. It was Adelaide's best first quarter since round 17, 2003. As you said, 13 to 6 overall, and Andrew McLeod, how did you see his first quarter, Rob? Well, he just dominated. Uh, he, he was set for Andrew Lovett. Lovett just had the one disposal in that first quarter. Kevin Sheedy tried to take McLeod out of the action, but McLeod wouldn't let that happen. What I like about the Crows' back line is that they will organise themselves so that this player here is never too far away from the centre square. Down to Christy and Mark. Thanks, Stephen. Well, there is a bit of an injury concern for Essendon, and this is not an excuse to replay that Mark McVeigh mark. It was a huge leap, wasn't it? But he actually came down afterwards and was really wincing with pain as he limped to the quarter time huddle. And he had his calf and the back of his knee worked on. He is starting on the ground. He won't start on the bench, but he's not 100% right after that mark. Crows only kicked nine goals last week against Carlton. I know that that was a different game, but seven here in the first quarter. It's a great start. Could have been a double bunger for the Dons. McVeigh's knee and McPhee's head. Adelaide the takeaway, and they're into their 50 again. McGregor takes it out, but helps Rusciuto put it back in. And now Edwards just dallied. He was pushed. No, as he kicked it. As he kicked it. No, as he kicked it. So it's not relayed. Desperate lunge by McVeigh. Clear free kick on the kick. And Tyson Edwards is just a wonderful player. Doesn't get the raps of some of his teammates. Uh, played over 200 games, played in premierships. Can play back, can go forward, can take a turn in the middle. Just have a look how strong he is. Shoulders and arms. And uh, another strong midfielder that this Adelaide team has got. Rising 29. He sort of always looked as though he was rising 29. And he knows how to kick a goal. This is getting very dangerous for the Dogs. 37 point margin. They're not missing from set shots. They're on fire. Dual Premiership player Tyson Edwards. And the Bombers have Kepler Bradley at full forward. They've got McPhee up forward. They've got Lucas and Lloyd up forward. Their back line is a little bit short at the moment. The Bombers in trouble already. 37 points. 
thought this would be close. It still may be close, but again, their horse, the Bombers. And the Bombers have uh, Dean Solomon playing at centre half back on Ken McGregor. Hudson the tap, beautifully sharked by Peveril, who's been very quiet. To half forward, Stanton with courage. Lucas, clever tap, love it, couldn't control it. Stanton the handle, McLeod, great vision. Bop, over to Matna. Raking kick, and he gets dealt with two after the uh, Caputa ball. And Mark Johnson was the perpetrator. So it's downfield. And no doubt about that free kick. Nothing more than a free kick, though. No, nothing more than a free kick. And in today's climate, you'll pay the penalty you wouldn't have five years ago. McGregor, short to Rutten, short to Burton. One metre, Matty, one metre. The, the Crows have got a huddle set up in front of this kick and players breaking into space. Play on the call. <laughs> well, he got himself into all sorts of bother. And Hudson didn't exactly help. Gives it back, said, you started this, son. You get us out of it. And Burton doesn't do too badly. All the bombers. Solomon didn't do enough. McGregor put it into a dangerous spot, but Bird was there. And he has Hill. With Burton arriving fast, but Big Hill covers the ball with his body. Gives to Peveril for just his third possession of the night. Essendon have been absolutely blitzed in midfield. You look at the stats. And yep. Burton's had 10, Thompson 9, McLeod 9, Goodwin 7. Rusciuto's been terrific, although he's only had 5. For Essendon, the Johnsons have had 3 each, Peveril 3, McPhee 2. The numbers are low. And the Bombers have got Albion into the midfield to try to improve it. Stanton's also on. He played well last week as a midfielder. McPhee did well. Long kick into the forward pocket. Lloyd. Back to Bradley. Heard. Can he weave some magic? He kicks it into the goal square. Not going to bounce the right way. I thought about it. Burton. Oh, oh the fall. Bad mistake. And that was very, very casual. He was casual even when he went in to pick the ball up. And must have realised that uh, Lloyd was going to put the tackle on. Maybe it was the spell James Heard had cast well, over the ball. Right man's got the football. He screws it around the corner. It's home. That is terrible defence by Adelaide. Nobody terrible on the defense. goal line. Nobody on the goal line. That ball crossed the line at about knee height. That's inexcusable. Well, here's the herd kick. And Burton. That was poor. Now, watch Lloyd. He just strode around. Kept it low. Herd's the only man there. And really... You don't expect that at this level, Robert. No, you don't. And a uh, couple of mistakes there by the Crows. First one was uh, the slack effort by Burton. And there's Solomon playing at centre-half back now. And uh, there's Fletcher at fullback. So it's a pretty short Essendon defence. But the Crows gave a goal back and their coach would not be happy. It's back where it was at quarter time. 31 points. And here go the Dons. Love it. Good knock on by Lucas. It eluded Bradley, though. Bassett. And the Crows suddenly have lost the compass back there. Bock to Goodwin. Now Rusciuto. And sanity is restored. Fletcher and Perry. Pushing and shoving from Perry. Jason Johnson. Essendon helping each other in that exchange. That was good. Solomon to Alvey. And this looks a bit better. And now there's a man loose. And it's Lloyd. And he has a man running for him in Mark Johnson. He doesn't go there. He goes to Bradley. And what a good mark with Bassett in close attendance. Now, the Crows were kicking these in the first quarter, although he's wider than were any of the set shooters at that end for Adelaide. Well, the ball came into the Essendon back line on one side of the ground, came out on the other side. That enabled Lloyd to run into space on the wing to get away from Rutten. Defender with a Ford's kick, but just not quite making it. High degree of difficulty, good attempt, but the Bombers need more. Interesting stat, they were 31 down at quarter time, only nine times in the club's illustrious history has it come from that far down at quarter time to win matches. The last time was the famous comeback against the Kangaroos in 2001. 
The cloud goes long. It's a good kick to Mark taken by Hudson. Quickly off to Rusciuto. Another penetrating kick. Solomon's got the sit. Decides to punch. Crows had the numbers around the ball. Stanton under pressure. Heads for the boundary line and did it well the youngster. Now is he going to be pinged? Didn't have any other option. Gee, I like, uh, I like Hudson. Big fella Ben Hudson and typical of the Crows play tonight. A mark in the midfield. Automatic play onto a player coming past. They get it from one end of the ground to the other in a flash. Quick kick out of the pack by Mark Johnson into the middle. Love it. Lucas, he's been quiet. Onto that raking left foot. Looks for Lloyd. Well played, Rutten. Lloyd keeps his feet. Has another crack at it. McPhee marks. Well done, Matthew Lloyd. And McPhee is well within range. Good second effort there, Rob. Yes, good effort by uh, Lloyd. Rutten got the spoil on, but he followed up and then hooked it back. And McPhee would have known that he'd be trying to centre the ball with the hook kick. Got himself in front and was able to take the mark. But the two young defenders, Rutten and Bock, playing well for the Crows. A chance for back-to-back -back goals for the Bombers. Adam McPhee has kicked six goals for this season. He's kicking from only 25 out on slightly worse than a 45-degree angle. Two in a row to the Bombers. Very importantly, keeping his feet and did the disciplined thing, and McPhee didn't let him down. Nature of the contest going through some change now. Essman doing better in midfield. Ah, they're in the game. Mark Johnson. McPhee, it's a, not a mark. Touch ball. He can kick another. On the burst, he nails it. Here come the Bombers. And you've got to give Kevin Sheedy credit for sticking with McPhee in the forward line when they were six goals down at quarter time. The temptation would have been strong to get him back into the back line to shore things up, but he stuck with his, his plan, and that is to put quality players up forward. And good on you, Kevin Chudy, for coaching that way, and he's been rewarded. And this young fella, he's got the tracking device on under the jumper, and most of the players have been uh, travelling around about the 14 to 20 kilometres a game. So three consecutive goals to Essendon, two of them to McPhee in the space of 30 seconds. Adelaide go inside 50. Shark well by Thompson. McGregor on hands and knees. Now Jason Johnson, he's under pressure. Fletcher, tackle. Again, Jason Johnson has another go at it. Only as far as Matna. Ooh, he's played on, sidesteps. To half. Runs to centre half forward. High ball into the goal square. Big flyers. Well yeah! And one of them is McGregor. Long kick to the goal square. Another classic mark. You won't, won't see many better than that in contested situations. How about that from the side? Ken McGregor. And Fletcher just couldn't get a fist on it. And worse still, I think he's hurt himself. The bomber fullback. Point blank range. Deserves a goal. And good to see Ben Hart getting back involved in the action. Getting towards the end of his career. But straightened up and long to the top of the goal square. And it is a short Essendon defence, except for Fletcher.
from the defence concedes a goal. Dustin Fletcher hurt in the incident. Great mark by McGregor. Total commitment. Mark Johnson trying to win it away. There'll be another ball up. Interesting stat a little while ago showing that Essendon are winning the clearances in this quarter. The midfield contest has changed, but the Bombers, while they've kicked three goals, have conceded two at the other end. Is Matna, and it's Adelaide winning this one away. Thompson poking it forward. The shooter. And spear it to Jericho, who can line them up from there. Well, Stephen Silvani, the full back of the century, couldn't have stopped that one. That was just a daisy cutter. Didn't get much higher than Bunch shoulder of... height all the way. And just a love tap to the back of the skull for good measure. Well, Zantuck would be frustrated because he knows that uh, the pass was just perfect. Nothing he could do. They haven't missed from seven set shots. Luke Jericho kicked one of them in the first term from about this range. And he has just kicked. No, he hasn't. McGregor nearly does. But Hill comes away with it. Mark Johnson. Heard. Bombers doing it the hard way. Peverell. Just got rid of it. Mark Johnson. Well played by the Dons. Well pressured by Adelaide. Love it well taken by Van Berlo who's come on. Now here's Zanta and Essendon by dint of real perseverance can build but that's a poor turnover. Half in the way. And he's off and running. Ooh. Oh, slipping over at the crucial moment was Goodwin. Now Bop. They were desperate to get it out to that flank to launch their attack. They had numbers there. And the follow-up run by McLeod. He's already gone past the player he's kicked it to. Matna. Oh, that was a bit risky. To Bach now, another turnover. Lloyd. To Winderlich, who runs to 45 and should nail the goal. Well, when you make a mistake like that, you deserve to be penalised to the ultimate. And Matna... It's got to be an absolute certainty if you're going to square the ball up like that in your back line. And it was nowhere near a certainty, the short pass. And they paid a heavy price. The lead is being chipped at by the Dons. And the Dons have got Albie on one wing. Lovett Murray's come back on. He's on the other wing on the other side of the ground. And uh, that gives them a bit of pace in the middle. And that's what they need at the moment. We're getting Come the last on. thing we expected. Look it out, look it out. A free scoring game Come verging on. on a shootout. Albie, Rashudo beats him. Albie back for more. And a bit more. But eventually the Crows prize it away. Oh, Solomon almost with the flight. Thompson a chance for Adelaide. Peveril popped it high from here, and I reckon it has been paid. The umpire in the middle of the ground paid it, not that umpire in picture. It was the umpire who was about 80 metres away. Good umpiring. Yeah, Martin Ellis called it, although Brett Allen's, Allen's line was very similar to that of our cameras. Mark Johnson, Zanta. If the Bombers kick the next, and we're at the halfway mark of the quarter, they'll be within a couple of goals and right in this game. Bassett just read it a little bit better than Bradley. Again, they try to get it out onto that flank. That's a dangerous kick. Tawny looks for Goodwin. Herd's there, though. Again, importantly, kept his feet, but he popped it straight up to McLeod. He's tackled by Lovett. Peveril. Herd in support. And his kick finds Hill. So Hill's told to play on now. None of the mark isn't here. He pumps it long to the pocket. Lloyd. Yeah, it's a free kick coming back here. And it's going against Lloyd, and the recipient is Bassett. No doubt about that. Yep. Good call. Now, Bassett, shaping to go across goal. Thought better of it. 
Van Burlo. The late replacement for Scott Welsh. Solomon. McGregor's got him. Love it, Murray. Just bumping it 15 metres along the boundary line. Adelaide have had a lot more of the ball so far, but that will be trending Essendon's way right now. They're having a much better quarter here. Just and three goals down, Tim. They've really worked their way back into the game well, Essendon. They have. Mark Johnson starting to get a bit of it. No result there. Now he gets one. Nothing on the end of it for the Dons, but they gain territory. Bombers have Lloyd back in the goal square. Lucas just in front of him. And that's something that we've seen over the years for a long, long time. James Hurd dropping back towards the wing position. Shirley, his opponent. And that ball's going nowhere. It's interesting with uh, Hurd. The Crows have run four different players against him during the course of this first half. So they just keep coming up with fresh legs on the skipper. Hudson. Beautifully read by Lovett Murray. Just couldn't get a handle on it. Winderlich. Fed out the handball. Hart. Well done to McLeod. And his kick finds the skipper. 103rd game as captain tonight. A new record surpassing Mark Bickley. They take a few risks in their back line, but it's uh, coming off at the moment. Rutten. Goes short. Shirley. Tawny. Into the middle. McGregor. To half forward. Two on one contest in favour of Essendon. And the mark's taken by Hill. Fletcher moving freely after looking as though he copped one when McGregor took that great mark a while ago. Is that out on the floor? No, not quite. As with everything he does, Andrew McLeod getting it just right. Maybe he chipped it into the ground. Bump ball, Tim. Yep. And it looks as though it landed just about on the line, which would be in. Is Goodwin. Andrew Lovett stealing it. Been quiet so far. McPhee gives it back to him. Lucas taken under it by Bach. All dangerous from Tawny. Letting Cupido in for Winderlich. Messing around. Goes back to it and gives it to Lloyd. Oh, he did that well. He did that well. Had his handball smothered. The kid was under a bit of pressure. He didn't panic. Just set that up. Only went about uh, 16 metres to pass. And here's Winderlich. Handball smothered. Saw Matthew Lloyd, and it's hard to believe if Lloyd kicks this, and you'd expect he will. They're just two goals behind. I just think that the run of the Adelaide midfield has come back. They, they started the game at a fantastic tempo, and just as the game progressed, and you can see here Rashudo having a spell, Goodwin behind him. They're their gun midfielders. They can't go all game. And it's just leveled out a little bit. The crowd booing because Matthew Lloyd's taking half an hour to have his kick. Well, they were waiting for him. They know all about him. Stat rankings have him number three in this match. He would have risen in not if that had gone through. That's a disappointing result for the Dons, who still trail by 17 points. And that was just about the biggest cheer of the night. Bassett receives the kick in to McLeod. Disposal number 14. Biglands. Now that's a free kick. Probably a professional free kick just to pull him up. Immediate play on. It's interesting in this second quarter, it's the Bombers that are kicking long more so than the Crows. First quarter, Crows kick long, got the score on the board. Essendon kick short. Total reversal in this second term. Chance for the Crows. Biglands. But waiting was Peveril. And his kick finds Lovett Murray. Switches back to the members' side and finds Alvey. To half back. Winderlick again. 
to love it Murray goes straight down the middle looks for Solomon dropped it McPhee the no look handball was good to her inside 50 chases on it's Lucas and Bop and Bop wins out doesn't want to give away the point looks for Burton <laughs> That's a pocket that Burton doesn't like. Put it out of bounds earlier in this quarter. And Matthew Lloyd turned around and hooked it back for a goal. How about, heard how about this for a handball? He must have known James Heard was there. And Heard under immense pressure. Nearly kicked a goal. It almost ran all the way home. Cupido climbs in for the Dons. Heard's got hold of Tawny. Yeah, Tawny and it's a ball up. Tawny back onto James Heard. At that boundary throw in, Heard just ran hard. As soon as the ball was tossed in, ran hard towards the goals. Another figure that is trending Essendon's way. Disposals per goal. Smothered by Lovett Murray, but Tawny got it back. McLeod giving it off. Burton now receiving from Riley. Shirley. Perry. Crucial last five minutes of the first half. Essendon have worked hard in this quarter to edge back into the game, but they really need another goal to put themselves in it. If Adelaide could kick one, well, they put themselves in a very strong position. Hart for Jericho. It'll be a long way out, though. Distance might be beyond it. Jericho loads up. It's a good kick to the tip of the goal square. Flyers wanted. McGregor was there. Laycock a little bit slow. Turnover, Prosciutto. Missed. Was he uh, in possession of the footy? That's why the Adelaide Crows fans roared. They thought it was a free kick coming their way. I think he was lucky. McVeigh's kick finds Fletcher. He goes short to Alvey and he stepped over the mark so he's been called to play on still inside defensive 50 Winderlich's played some good minutes in this second term oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> you could see it coming oh, I don't think you'd make a coach quarters <laughs> you'd have a heart attack <laughs> James Heard whilst all this is going on and Essendon are just fiddling a bit with the footy James Heard is standing at full forward having a well earned rest Zantuck in the old vernacular hugs the boundary line, but Biglands takes a good mark. Laycock has not been able to oh. assert himself on this match yet. There's been some careless kicking by the Crows in this quarter after their explosive start. That's a lovely kick by Edwards. McGregor, Rusciuto, too far out, but he puts it in the hot spot. Well swept away by the Dons. Winderlich. Into the jaws of death. Ball up. Yeah, did, you could hear the umpire say, put his head down, and Winderlich did. As soon as he took possession, he uh, he ducked his head down, looking for a free kick, but the umpires won't give him one. Must prevent a goal here. The Bombers. Well, that's a free kick to Essendon. So they're out of danger momentarily. Zantuck. Can he use it? It's an ordinary kick. Slews off the side of the boot. Edwards. Well, it was a good result for Essendon in the end. Sloppy kick from Zanta. James Hurd coming back into the action. Hill gone to full forward. Laycock doing the ruck work for the Bombers. Riley snares it. Nice little sidestep from Skipworth to Burton. To centre half forward. Another turnover marked by Solomon. Bit over two minutes left, and what crucial minutes they are. McPhee, stakes so high in this match, all oh, that kick had to be precision itself, and it was for Lovett Murray. Now Alvey, as the Bombers build, can they kick that elusive goal? Cupido for Hill. Brilliant kick. Absolutely brilliant kick. Good play by Alvey to set Cupido up out wide, who could play on take a couple of steps and just see Alvey just sees him out the corner of his eye and the player with the ball a couple of steps brilliant on his left foot and he just needs to finish off 
It's a good kick from a set shot. He's got a good action, but at times he can be a little wayward. I'm backing him. 24 he was on Thursday. Big moment here to cut the margin to just 12. Could have come in closer, but it doesn't matter. He rams it home, and the Bombers are right back in it. Rose led by 37 points, one minute into the second turn. Now they lead by just 12. McPhee in at the centre Good. bounce for the Bombers. Goodwin back on the ground. It's been 16 minutes since their last goal, the Crows. Heard. Well done by Edwards. To Goodwin. Pops it up inside 50 from the side. Laycock couldn't hang on to it. Skipworth. Doherty to the pocket. Jericho has a ping. Threads it through. Big goal. Two to Jericho. And a more spectacular game of Aussie rules you couldn't see this year. This well, has been great. Laycock does everything but claim the mark. From here on, it's a series of Crows handballs backward to buy a bit of time and space. And then out wide to Jericho, who's got time to settle. Not an easy goal to kick when you're virtually standing still when you kick the ball. So that is a lot harder than it looked. And Neil Craig would be pretty happy that they've got one just before the half-time sign. Laycock needed to mark it. It's an obvious statement now, but uh, there was an alternative, I guess, and that was to belt it clear. McGregor got a hand in. Still a chance for the Bombers to pull it back. McPhee. Not much on the end of it. There's a lot of Adelaide and there's Mark Johnson. And now there's Cupido. And there's still Cupido. And there's Hill. And who's on the end of that? Lovett Murray with two against him. And Mark Johnson over in the other pocket. Not many seconds left. Lucas and Goodwin. Windelick besieged and that will be a ball up. Windelick has to get the ball out quicker. That's twice he's just covered up once he's taken possession. Gee, it was desperate stuff. They've got to clear some space here, the Bombers. Well, 12 seconds to go. Biglin's the tap. Spills to Matna. Cupido has a ping. It's touched. And what a quarter. What a fight back by the Bombers. They trailed by 31 at quarter time. It got out to 37 early in the second quarter. But the Bombers have responded. They kicked five goals to three in that turn. They were good, the Bombers. Uh, their midfield started to pick up, and McPhee was kept in the forward line.
There's the scene in the Essendon rooms at half time. They were 37 points down. They fought back bravely in that second term. It's now just 17 points of difference, well and truly, in this match. A mini final for the Bombers tonight as we have a look at the results so far in round 11. As we reach the halfway mark, Tim, it's amazing. It's round 11 already. It's race through this year. And the Magpies coming from nowhere, three in a row. Well, they have now put themselves in a position at halfway where they could actually yep. make the finals. The team that no was favourite for the wooden spoon three weeks ago, having strung together three, if they, they've won four, if they could win eight of their last 11, and if they keep playing like they did last night, they might do that, they'd be in the finals. I think Travis Cloak's made a huge difference. And so has Didac. He obviously missed the, the opening of the season with that knee problem, but he's been back and fit and firing. Problems for the Cats have got two bad losses in a row. Yes, they did lose two early in the season, so I don't suppose it's panic stations yet. They have a home game against Adelaide next week, but uh, they do need to uh, settle down. Just wonder if the Ablett issue might have unsettled them a bit. They certainly seemed to mm. be off the boil in the first half last night. Carlton, Sydney. The Blues gave it a, a, a really good shot, but came up short. The Swans, uh, well, won a game they should have won. Barry 18, Hall. 18 goals. Yes, and kick five. Bazza is the captain. A Lachlan four. Five yeah. to Whitnell. I suppose Paul Ruse would argue, and uh, with justification, that um, against lesser opposition, his team can play like that. They played uh, directly, and uh, and they played well, and they do have the key forwards to capitalise. I tell you, he's a talent, his weight. Yeah, he is. He is uh, a bit of good news for Carlton this year, and there hasn't been a lot of it. The, the wooden spoon seems to be looming. West Coast ventured to Melbourne again. They dropped a game against the Pies. They came here hot favourites against the Tigers. They were behind late in the final term, but just managed to get over the line, but far from impressive and well played Richmond. Must have been a tremendous match at the MCG. I think the big issue out of the game is the fact that West Coast have played in Melbourne twice this year, both at the MCG, lost to Collingwood, nearly lost today to Richmond. They've got Melbourne at the MCG in a fortnight. That is going to be a major test. If they're going to win a flag, and they're well placed to do it with uh, what, 10 wins from 11, yeah. uh, they've got to learn to play well at the MCG. Judd and Cousins amongst the uh, high possession getters again for the West Coast Eagles. Gee, Ben Cousins must be a big chance for the Brownlow this year. Another break from Amy Stadium, half time, and it is the Crows leading the Bombers by 17. I can, yep. Yep. That's right. McLeod. Yep.
Good old-fashioned Aussie rules hangers tonight. Mark McVeigh and then Ken McGregor in the goal square went back and uh, kicked the six-pointer. That was a ripper. Game just about had everything tonight. It's the Crows, 17 points up on the Bombers who fought back nicely in the second term. 63 plays, 46. Jericho, McGregor, Perry, two each for the Crows. Lloyd and McPhee are the multiple goal scorers for the Bombers. Robert Walls, as we have a look at some of the key players so far in this match. How have you seen it? Oh, it's been a great game and it's really been an entertaining match and I guess if you had to pick a, a player who's best on field at halftime, it'd be hard to go past Andrew McLeod. He started in the back line as he, as he has been in recent weeks and then he pushes up towards the middle. Opposition teams try to take him right back to that last line of defence for the Crows but they uh, organise themselves particularly well, that Crow back line. They always try to make sure that he's up across the half back towards the wing. What I like about him is that he backs himself when he's got the ball. He runs and he carries. He's an 80 metre player, carries at 20 metres, then gets the long kick in. First time I've seen Adelaide play this year, one thing that impressed me, the way they rotate their midfielders. Yes, they're using their interchange bench a lot. And players like Goodwin and Rashudo, who, who are stars, they regularly come off the field. They have a, about a five minute break, then they're put back into the fray. Uh, Simon Goodwin, look, he's, uh, he's an experienced player. Look at the size of him. In the old days, he'd play centre-half back, centre-half forward, such as his size. But he's a hard-running midfielder, uses that left foot, and uh, he's an absolute gun in this team. Underrated, he's got exquisite skills, hasn't he, Tyson yeah, Edwards? Great balance. He, he doesn't get knocked over, can go left side, right side, hits the targets. And, uh, and again, a player who started in the forward line and uh, as the game progressed was put into the midfield, and uh, I just think that the, the coach of the Crows has done a really good job mixing and matching his midfield players. There's no doubt that they ran out of a little bit of puff halfway through that second quarter. And to Essendon's credit, Kevin Sheedy made a few changes that helped his players come into it. Let's compare the two midfielders and look how uh, dominant Adelaide have been so far. 35 more disposals. 26 more uncontested possessions. They're winning everything, except the clangers, which they don't want to win. Yes, well, clearances and hit-outs has always been a strength of the, of the Adelaide Crows from the days of Malcolm Blight all the way through. But, you know, they're strong bodies, and uh, Hudson's given them a good contest. What I like about uh, Hudson is that not only does he do the ruck work, he can also get a kick at ground level. And, of course, they've got Biglands who can then take over and do 10 minutes in each quarter. But uh, they do power it away. You're impressed that Kevin Shetty stuck with his game plan and kept McPhee up forward? Absolutely. I think uh, the temptation would have been at quarter time to get McPhee back across the half-back line just to slow things down a little bit but he kept him forward and uh, McPhee was able to get a couple of goals and he, he makes the forward line lively look Lucas and Lloyd are very talented players but this fella's got an aggression that they haven't got and it's a natural aggression and uh, he likes the contest and he likes to knock blokes over. Have you seen the contest between uh, Rutten and Lloyd? I think the honours are about even. Uh, two goals to Matty Lloyd. He's no longer playing from the goal square as the pee in the pot but uh, what I like here, a couple of his chases and tackles to keep the ball in, they were good. Look, he's out of form. That was a bad blue, wasn't it, by the yeah. Crows defence? He, he is out of form, but he's working his way back in. And the best way to do that is to make sure you get the tackles on and you do the chases and the pressures. Do the little things, and the other things will then come back. Primus Whiteboard, you want to make some changes, coach? Well, that's how the Essendon midfield ended up at the end of that second quarter. And I think a couple of changes that we'd make, we'd get Hurd in to replace McPhee. And McPhee had a bit of a run on the ball late in that quarter. To get him back into the forward line where he's dangerous. We'd have Peveril come into that wing and replace Alvey. Now, Alvey was good, but put Alvey onto the interchange bench and then halfway through this third quarter, bring Alvey back on and use his pace to advantage. And I'd get Stanton, the youngster, Stanton to come into the middle. Now, he's, a, he's an improving player and he can run and carry the football. Get him into the midfield. Move Mark Johnson into the forward line where he's real hardness at the football and the rally 
least for the contest, would help the Bombers lock the ball in. So three changes in the midfield? Three changes in the midfield and a lot more as the quarter progresses because players like uh, Winderlich and uh, little Andy Lovett, I'd give them a run in the midfield at some stage too because the Crows are rotating more in the middle than Essendon are. Let's have a look at the uh, stat rankings as they stand at half-time. And uh, Will McPhee's out on top from David Hill. Bit of a surprise, McLeod in the top five along with McGregor. Yes, and uh, Mark Johnson there always giving something to the Bombers. James Hurd, well, he just goes wherever he likes. He's had four different opponents in that first half. Jericho, he's been handy up forward, kicked a couple of goals, and then it gets to the Adelaide midfielders. Crows by 17 points at half-time in this round 11 game against the Bombers. Ten from the AFL provided some exceptional goals. Demon Adam Uze set the dome alight with this display of quality crumbing. The left foot snap off two steps. Unbelievable. <laughs> that is fantastic. Late in the final term and with just a point the difference, Jeff Farmer's desperate bid to keep the ball alive pays handsome dividends. He'll go solo. Oh, he does it. Jeff Farmer. 
But the winner of the Toyota Goal of the Year for Round 10 comes courtesy of quick-thinking magpie, Chris Tarrant. What a goal! Chris Tarrant boots his third, and the Pies look good things from here. Crows leading the Bombers by 17 points. Welcome back to Amy Stadium. Now the Bombers fought back hard in that second term. They had to do it with a couple of players who are not quite 100%. Justin Fletcher uh, appeared to hurt his hip in that term. He stayed out on the ground, stretched it out, had some work done at half time, but is still not moving completely freely. He will start out on the ground though. And Mark Wavey still limping from injuring himself in that marking contest in the first term. Really important game this for Adelaide at home. They're all important, of course, but their next two games are away. They're really tough games. And then six of their last nine games are here at Amy Stadium. So a win here will give them a really good chance of playing in the top four. We start the third term. Adelaide by 17 points. Peveril. Adelaide come away with it. Goodwin to the 50. Perry. Not a lot on offer. Now he goes into the pocket. Well-weighted kick. Very clever kick. And it's marked by Hayden Skipworth. Tight angle. But they have kicked accurately tonight. The Crows with 10-3. He's got to make up his mind. He's going to go short. McGregor all alone in the pocket. I think they gained five metres. And little Skipworth took a lot of pressure off himself. He really didn't want to have the kick. So Ken McGregor has kicked two. He's up to five goals, five for the season. He doesn't want to kick it, you can tell by the eyes. He's going to be forced to boot it in the end. First goal is a big one. Difference between a four goal Adelaide lead and a couple of goals. Bombers have got uh, West Coast at Subiaco next week. That's almost unwinnable, so this is a huge match. Two very big quarters of football in Essendon's 2005 season. McPhee for Jason Johnson and receives it well. He plays well as a forward, Tim. He really does. He presents. He times his leads. Leaps early. Oh, Cupido misjudging that. Bassett goes nowhere. Straight back to McPhee. So they're feeling each other out. Perhaps doing it a little nervously at the start of this second half. The stakes are high. Now Lovett, who hasn't had much impact so far. Well, they've got Lovett playing up in the middle. And Mark Johnson is playing deep forward, as we thought he might at halftime. Lovett's kick finds Solomon. Now he goes for the long option. It's a helicopter. And that's a solid mark taken once again by McGregor. Who all of a sudden finds himself down back. Tawny switches. Back to the members' side. He has three bounces. Draws the player. Goodwin. Nicely worked by the Crows. Skipworth. To his skipper. Back to Matna. Short. To Thompson. Goodwin, back to Thompson again, looks for Jericho, gee that was well worked by the Crows, and he is an exciting young talent Luke Jericho, only 20, playing game number 19 in his AFL career, and as they worked that ball from halfback flank to the wing, they fiddled with it a little bit the Crows, Essendon dropped numbers back, and this was the important kick, and Jericho led out towards the pocket. Had he gone down the middle, it would have been outnumbered situation. Three bombers to one crow. He's kicked two. One from about 45. He failed to make the distance. And obviously, from long range, not his great suit. And James Hurd, who has played every second of the game. So two reprieves for the Bombers here. Hill under pressure. Didn't make a bad fist of it. In fact, that's a very good result. Welsh to love it. Murray put the foot to the floor. Oh, he's oh, pinned him for running too far. That's tough. That is very tough. When you consider how far uh, McLeod ran in the first quarter on that siding. 
run through the centre. That man now gives it to Thompson. Good centre. Two bombers there, and they're pretty good ones in Hurd and Fletcher. Solomon hitting hard. Tawny up in the front half. Burt, Hurd, Jason Johnson. Winderlich. Backed himself. Hill. And they're out of trouble for the moment, but he has kicked that blindly, and Hudson's in the way. He was dead set stiff, love it, Murray. The replay suggests he took 14 steps. But that's Fresh come and gone and as we have a ball up inside the Crows 50. Hurd has worked hard in that half-back line. Now just pushes himself to the middle. Tawny, his opponent, just uh, going alongside him. Rusciuto runs onto it. Perry dropped the beans. Can't get boot to ball. Smash forward by Hill. Matt is there. Good tackle on him by Peveril. This is key from the Crows. Hearted mouth stuff for Essendon fans, isn't it? Because they're defending grimly here, and uh, two or three times Adelaide have looked as though they might score a goal. High tackle. Walsh's free kick. Now, is that 50? No. Just a little bit of leeway is granted these days on those uh, returns of the footy. Love it now. There's the Bombers. We'll see if they can land a blow at the other end of the ground. And Hill has run hard to get it to centre-half forward. Good signs to have Lovett get some uh, early touches in this third quarter. Crowded inside the 50. And Hill doesn't quite know where to put it. He goes long. Not a great deal of percentage in that. Adelaide's ball. Still the Crows by three goals. Hart. Now here's a chance. A bit of a break here for Adelaide. Bassett. Ooh. Just gets boot to ball for his run down by Cupido. That's a free kick to McGregor. Now, will advantage be paid? No, it won't. Reckless leap by Solomon. And you can see he's got the tracking gear under his jumper. And they tell us that midfielders are getting up to 20 kilometres a game. Forwards and defenders around the 14 kilometres a game. Bot kicks it inside 50. Edwards couldn't get the one-hander. Fletcher. Interesting kick. Zantuck to Welsh, and he finds Lucas at half back. They really are hanging on here, Eston. Well, he's just got <laughs> nothing to go to. Solomon's presented. Matthew Lloyd has to come down. Lloyd has to run 60 metres to uh, contest this ball. Finally, he's done it. First time Lucas has touched the ball in nearly half an hour of footy. Mark Johnson just got it off. Peveril. Chance here for Cupido. Good hands. Wrong side for a left footer. So a difficult situation. You just never know what he might do though. Well, we've had six and a half minutes of footy. Hasn't been a goal kicked. It's been mainly grim defence from the Dons. It would be an enormous fillip if they could produce the first goal of the half. A margin 18 points. A long way to bend it back from there. That's what he's trying to do. And, oh, my goodness, that was a good try. The margin 17. And the Crows setting up the old-fashioned huddle, as you can see. Great uh, camera work there. And now they're breaking out into space, and this will work 99 times out of 100, and you just wonder why teams don't set up a zone defence. Goodwin. And the kicks come off nicely to the wing. Thompson. Little give to Rutten. To half forward, and McGregor again. That's mark number eight. 14 disposals for McGregor. Inside 50, Perry. Again, the Crows have it in their forward 50, but again, they're very close to the boundary line. Well, something's got to give here. That's it. 
Perry's kicked two goals, both in the first term. Tough shot, but he's on his right side. Only a point. Bombers have Laycock on the interchange bench, their second ruckman. It just might be time to get Laycock onto the ground and move David Hill to full forward. Thought he looked pretty dangerous when he went there in that second quarter. This is goalless footy that is very tense, very exciting. McVeigh. Welsh. Jason Johnson over the top. Can't escape. Now Welsh can. Bombers are away. McPhee. The game he presents out to the wings. He is a real athlete, is Adam McPhee. Not a lot to go to. Uh, I, I just reckon the Bombers need to be uh, prepared to move the ball on a bit quicker. Yeah, Solomon. Back, back Lloyd and Lucas to beat their opponents in a contest. Uh, they're not prepared to do that. They're just trying to get the perfect uncontested pass off as they're doing here. No one wanting to make a mistake. I think that... This makes it too easy for the Crows. It does. The, the game's on the knife edge. And I reckon everyone's a little nervous. If the ball came in quickly to Lucas or Lloyd or Hill, the pro defenders, they'd be, they'd be panicking, no doubt about that. Trying to get your name on the Bombers banner next week. No there's, chance. There's the long ball and Hudson's in the way. Gives it off to Edwards. And here's McGregor again. Mark number nine. She's having a good night. Skipworth, McPhee, spectacular from the side. Now Cupido's run all the way down to defensive 50 to receive. He's got Fletcher on short. Back two metres, Ben, Ben, back two, thank you. Do it, mate. Still three goals the difference. Love it. Heard. Out wide. Now Sullivan's found some space here. Can he get a kind bounce? No, took his eyes off the footy at the wrong moment. And that is an excellent win for the Crows. Struggling, Solomon. Not a lot of confidence about his play tonight. Sort of spent it before he had it, didn't he? He had, yeah, took his eyes off the ball. There's Mark Johnson, who's playing at full forward next to Matthew Lloyd. And really hasn't been in the action. And Kevin Sheedy must be thinking, well, sooner or later, I've got to get him into the mix, get him into the middle. Good idea to get him up forward, but the ball just hasn't been coming to him. Goodwin, dangerous player, runs hard, kicks long. McGregor now. Ten marks. And it's going to be relayed. Brought down late. Right. Solomon, was it? Late. Yes, it was. It happens too often. And that... Provides Adelaide with almost a guinea goal. He's a serial offender, isn't he? He's a serial offender, and it's no good saying, well, he's a bit stiff. He's not a bit stiff because he consistently does it. He's just got to be a bit smarter. In fact, a lot smarter and not hurt his team by giving away those downfield free kicks by coming in late. Jericho to give the Crows a four-goal lead. He's done it, and they'll take some pegging back. Solomon on McGregor and McGregor's just been able to take uncontested marks. We also see Mark Johnson has been moved into the centre and uh, I reckon that's a good move by Kevin Sheedy. Bounce favours the Bombers. Hill to Johnson. Couldn't make the most of the opportunity. Now the Crows again go forward. Goodwin. Quick hands. Doherty's back on. McGregor.
Well, he's more than made up for the uh, late withdrawal of Scott Welsh, hasn't he? He has stood up big time, Rob. He's been terrific. In fact, Jericho, Perry and McGregor, I reckon they've all taken it on board to uh, give a bit extra in the absence of their mate. He's had 10 marks, McGregor, nine of them uncontested. It's been a six-possession quarter, and we're only halfway through it. And game-high disposals. Well, Dean Solomon belatedly receiving the message. That must have been crushingly disappointing for Essendon after more than 10 goalless minutes. A real arm wrestle, and then the first goal given up in that needless way. And Adelaide has strung two together, and Brett Burton might make it three. It's long, but it's wide. And Kevin Sheedy, I reckon he's had a gutful of Dean Solomon and has decided you're off the ground and you're going to get a message or two from it's a us. long conversation. Well, well, the quarter had gone 13 minutes without a goal being scored. It was an arm wrestle. It was an arm wrestle that nobody was winning and with a bit of undisciplined football, he turned the favour in the way of the Crows who were able to get that goal. And, of course, they then answered with another one and, and it could just be the Goodman's difference. about to kick another... The game has been broken open with three goals in a couple of minutes. Adelaide's lead is out for 36 points. And Essendon's season is ebbing away. Well, the strong bodies around the, uh, the stoppage. Again, Rusciuto wins it at ground level, fires off the handball to his good buddy. And on his left boot, that suits him. start again well, the Bombers now facing a six goal deficit Winderlich did it well to McPhee out wide Hurd's got some space about 30 metres to work with here the skipper usually uses it well he looks for Lovett Lloyd the little soccer but it's all Adelaide here the Bombers look tired Crows full of running. They've rotated brilliantly off the bench. Skipworth. Rusciuto. Bassett. Long ball. And McGregor again. He's having a blinder. Mark number 11. Six marks for the quarter to McGregor. 11 for the match. 18 disposals. Three goals won. Looks to Perry. Whistle on play. Push. And Adam McPhee has been put into defence as a spare man, and that means that the Crows have got a spare man too, and that is Ben Hart. So Kevin Sheedy, with those three quick goals, realises he's just got to stop this onslaught. Perry pumps it long. Jason Johnson. Clearing kick. And the Bombers get some respite. said they look tired quarters I, I wonder if it's tired or dispirited it must have been terribly demoralizing for them to fight so hard for a long period in fact they've been fighting backs to the wall since quarter time and then to concede the way they did and suddenly one goal turned into three it uh, has been depressing and now they've given away a free and Essendon's last quarter has been their worst quarter for a long, long time. In fact, I think they've won one last quarter in the 10 games that they've played. They have 18 men on the defensive side of the centre now. Down to Skipworth, the Bombers are all back. But it doesn't stop. Shirley finding space. Burton now. And there's another one. men back and yet the barn door was still open <laughs> the 
Well, the proverbial floodgates have opened. And the Crows have kicked four goals in quick succession. And it's out to 42 points, which is the biggest margin in the match. Biglands got it out to Shirley. Stanton. Now love it. Top one high. And Jeez. can't let it go. Look at them. Aggressive tackling, they are, isn't it? They're hunting in numbers. And here's McLeod. Chips it to half forward. Burton's got space. Handles on to Riley. He goes long. Perry's there from the side. McVeigh couldn't hang on to it. McGregor again. Fed it to Rusciuto. Good pick up on the half volley to McVeigh. And the ball is out of trouble. Welsh, Bradley, Fletcher. And now Jason Johnson. It's all happening at one end of the ground, though. Heard. Stanton calls inside. Cupido with Peveril running. They've got McPhee, so Bradley. Up forward, go long to McPhee, give him a chance, one out. He goes to himself. Ignored the other options. Hart getting a boot. A timely boot onto the ball. And was confident enough to keep it alive. And now McLeod in his customary manner, and he's fell. Lloyd the offender this time. Another relay free kick. The wheels are well and truly off. Frustration set in for the Bombers. When your senior players do it, well, the younger fellas got nowhere to go. Rusciuto. Ah, oh, boundary umpire said he juggled it over the line. That's a tough call. It's a tough, it is a typical call, isn't it? Into the last grab. Yeah, no, the last grab was over. Last shot in. I'm not playing into the last grab. It's over the line. It's not the field umpire. It's cool. It's the boundary umpire who uh, made that decision. I think he might be right. Rusciuto's had nine touches this quarter. 55 from the Crows' goal. Riley. Jason Johnson now. Lloyd out at half forward. Wrestles with Rutten. Bassett's been good. Heads for the boundary line. Full house at Amy Stadium. How about that? 43 and a half thousand. And the vast majority are liking what they see. Heard. Trying to work a little miracle. Peveril, a cloud laying the tackle and the ball stayed alive for Matna. Adelaide playing with confidence and aggression. One man keeping his feet, the other losing his, and Perry's kick is well weighted. McGregor again. Boundary up by has got no idea because he's about 200 metres behind. It's out on the full, we know that. And it's Zantuck's ball to Winderlich. Four goals to none in this quarter. Adelaide's way, putting the issue beyond doubt here. Bock and Lucas and Burton winning the day. No help at all for Lucas. And now the loose man is Jericho. He's kicked three. He goes along McGregor again. Well played by Bradley. And Andrew McLeod, he, got, he shook himself up a bit in that strong tackle where he got hold of Peveril and slammed him into the ground. Fletcher to do the kicking in his targets. Mark Johnson sticks out the leg. Just boundary up there. He's copping a bit, isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's even got to go and chase his own ball. And the Adelaide fans are giving him a hard time. But... Yeah, good call. I think he's right. Has he got the juice to throw the ball back in properly, Rob? I hope so. We don't want a little throw. Big one. Mm. Magnificent. Hill against Biglands. Neither really got a decisive tap. And it's in the back to Adelaide. <laughs> Martin McVeigh not entirely happy with that decision.
The Doherty's got it. Sideways to Bassett. He's called to play on. He's running backwards, but he's got support. Bock. Matna loads up with a thumping drop punt to the tip of the goal square. Oh, what a ripper by Thompson! It has been a highlight reel tonight. And there's another one. They are prepared to kick it long to a contest. And the Essendon defence is under pressure with that ball coming down. I've just got a feeling we're going to see more of this in football because teams that play that way are getting scores on the board. So Scott Thompson and teams feel good about playing that way. Imagine how this young fella feels after taking a hanger like that. Just kick one. He nails his second. And it's getting ugly for Essendon. You can only imagine, Robert, there's nothing better than taking a big hanger in the goal square. No, and have a look at these statistics coming up. The last 13 minutes, it's just an absolute domination by the Adelaide Crows. Handballs, kicks, marks, you name it. Adelaide running hot. Bombers haven't scored a goal in this third term. Uncontested possession. That just gives you an idea that Essendon are tiring and dropping off their opponents. In the last 13 minutes, that is. Well, that first goal was always going to be a big one. And once it was kicked, it became an avalanche. And here they go again. Goodwin. Thompson once more. Jerry Cowan. Zantuck. Is that a push on Zantuck? Deemed legal, there'll be a throw in. The margin has blown out to 49 points. Bombers were within two kicks just before half time. Adelaide kicked a late goal. The rest is history. Thompson again, he's been a good contributor, but Hill emerges for the Bombers. Johnson losing his footing made it easy for Doughty. Riley oh, off the ball, Tim. Free kick against McVeigh. And again, a sign of frustration with the Essendon team. It's become a capitulation, sad yes. to say, for the Bombers in this quarter. 18 forward 50 entries in this quarter. Just uh, for the Crows, just six to the Bombers, just six forward 50 entries. Very, very low. Simon Goodwin has kicked a couple. He's a lovely left foot kick. Man on the mark, inside 40 meters. He shouldn't miss. He doesn't. Closed by 55. see the incident, did we, that was uh, resulting in the free kick? It's raining goals for the Crows at 80. What a blowout in the third quarter. When it looked like at half-time it was game on. In this term, there's, there's six goals to nothing. Yeah, Ben Rutten, and this is one of the strengths of the Crows. Ben Rutten, number 25. As soon as Neil Craig took over as coach, he put Rutten to full back and he's kept him there. He's only played 22 games, but he's a good player. Perry. Now Bradley clears for the Bombers, but only momentarily as the mark's taken by McLeod. Disposal number 20. It goes yeah. right into the middle to the man Robert was talking about. Yeah, look, he's a big, strong boy. Just 22 senior games under his belt, but given the big jobs, the coach shows a lot of faith in him, and Nathan Bock is the other key defender. Just 22 games to him also. Penetrating kick by Doherty! McGregor! Mark number 12. Well, that's seven this quarter. Well, he's just uh, dominating, isn't he? He's played on Bradley, he's played on Solomon, and now he's on Fletcher. 
So Ken McGregor's kick three. Just to make it 10 goals, the difference. disposes 12 marks and has kicked four goals one that is a night out by anyone's stretch and again they're prepared to kick it long to a contest in a dangerous spot in their forward line seven goals to none in this quarter they kicked seven to this end of the ground in the first quarter so 14 at one end of the ground and there's the other young defender, Tim, Nathan Fock. Just 22 games under his belt. He's had the job on Scott Lucas all night. Fock and Rutten, two names to remember. It has turned into a rout. Adelaide have romped away to a 61-point lead at the last change. And let me remind you of a stat I referred to before the match. The 22 players representing Adelaide tonight had kicked 88 goals between them through 10 rounds. So they were averaging under nine goals per match. Well, tonight they've kicked 17 in three quarters. 31 at quarter time, the Crows. 17 at half time, but the margin now has blown out to 61 points. McGregor, four, and Jericho and Goodwin, three, are the multiple goal scorers, the main goal scorers for the Crows. short McGregor all alone in the pocket so it's a helicopter and that's a solid
Well, it's been Ken McGregor's night. Overall, 22 disposals, 12 marks, four goals, one. But in that third quarter, he had 11 disposals, took seven marks, and kicked two goals. And here's one of the main reasons. The Adelaide Crows are 61 points in front of Essendon. It's all fallen horribly apart for the Bombers. 17-6, great kicking for goal two by the Crows. 108, 7-5-47. Are the Bombers afraid of the dark? They've lost, they're on the way to losing their all their seven night games so far this season, Rob. Yeah, they've been disappointing because uh, I thought at half time we had a game on our hands, but uh, they only took possession of the ball twice in their forward 50 in that third quarter. Kevin Sheedy, as you'd expect, very animated. Dean Solomon, we talked about him, Joe, since 99. He has given away 14 free kicks after a player has disposed of the ball. So after a player's got rid of it like that, yeah. example like that, that's number one in the competition. Well, as you said, he's a serial offender. And uh, the disappointing thing, it happened at a crucial stage of the game. Now, halfway through that third quarter, neither team had kicked a goal. And then he gave away that, uh, that penalty and it gave Adelaide their first goal of the quarter. It opened up the floodgates. The Crows kicked seven goals in the next 13 or 14 minutes, and Essendon uh, didn't get any. And it just, it just really knocks the confidence out of a team when you see a senior player do that, and you know that he's done it before. Christian Mark. Thanks, Stephen. Well, as you said, Kevin Sheedy was really angry in that three-quarter time break. He came down to the ground about five minutes before the end of the term so he could do the board then so he could get straight out and talk to the players. Picked out a few individual players to talk to before he got the whole team together and just said, move the ball quicker and be smarter about it. Neil, I know the game's just started, but Neil Craig has made the point that he wants fans, not just here but around Australia, to enjoy the game and for it to be entertaining. And that's exactly what, what that quarter was. It's very important to Neil Craig as far as that is concerned. Well, that's uh, a real positive, isn't it? Entertaining. They have made it entertaining, the Crows. So thrill their fans. Bombers playing for respect. Adelaide for some percentage. Burton's is kicked. Chopped off by Aldi. Stanton has two bearing down on him, but he has the time and space. Bombers starting the last quarter, 61 points down. Gee, that gives Lu uh, Lucas a tough job, and he gives away a free kick. And 50-metre penalty. Blew the whistle. This is just becoming catastrophic for the Dons, who, having conceded seven goals to none in the third quarter, now face the last, having won six of their last 26 final quarters. The signs aren't good for the Dons. Hey, Stephen, David, please. The Crows have they set up place. a huddle okay. at centre-half forward. And now they're breaking out into space, but uh, Hart hasn't honoured any of those leads. Bock. Into the middle to Goodwin. Now Edwards. Can't thread the eye of the needle there. It's cut off by Jason Johnson. The middle go Essendon, marked by Laycock. Winderlich provides the run, but he hasn't got much support. Cupido just didn't run hard enough to receive. Lucas. The Crows win it back again. Edwards. Beautiful little pass and finds Perry. Solomon prepares to come back on for the Bombers. Pretty crowded up ahead. Bombs away. And this time it's an Essendon man, and a big one. David Hill as Solomon comes back. Wonder if he'll be playing next week. Well, Damien Cupido's been taken off. Uh, so because Fletcher. Fletcher's coming off injured too. Yeah, well, Cupido's not off through injury, through lack of effort. Lovett's had a bad night. Had a few mates. Doughty, Riley. Crows effortlessly work it clear. McLeod, chest mark dropped by Rashido. Rare error. Bradley for Zantuck. Terrible kick, turnover. Doughty. <laughs> to Edwards, to Tawny. Running hard is Bock. Heard. 
Now McPhee. Not a lot on offer again. Leads provided by Laycock. Well done. Chips it over to Lucas. Who by his lofty standards has had a very dirty night. Lucas loads up from 55. Blazes away. And easy pickings there. A rush behind as we go to Christy Mulhouse. It's actually an ankle injury for Dustin Fletcher. He injured it in the second term. He tried to play out the, the rest of the game, but he just re-injured it then in the contest and had to come off, and he won't take any further part in the game. Goodwin breaks away for Adelaide on the non-preferred. Comes back inside onto the one he likes. Five. McLeod Five. uses it for the 22nd time of the evening. Thompson for the 20th time also kicked a couple of goals been a handy forward Hill to McVay who's taken the mark of the night given Essendon perhaps it's uh, one really significant moment of joy Riley Shirley Rusciuto bit casual McLeod missing the target Heard mopping up for Alvey So Alvi at half back, nothing on offer again. Goes out wide and finds Stanton. Long ball. He had McPhee as an option in the centre corridor, and uh, McPhee screaming at his teammate, saying, uh, Lift your eyes and have a look because I'm there, I'm presenting, and it's a far better option than going to the boundary line. Jason Johnson. Lloyd's one out. Good strength by Rutten. And Bock rushes through behind. It doesn't get any easier for the Bombers next week. They've got the short week. It goes to Subiaco to take on West Coast next Friday night. That is a sensational kick. That is a 60-metre pass. And Rutten, the full-back, is on the end of the hand pass. McGregor with Bradley. Uh oh, he might be in trouble there. It's an Essendon free kick. It's a land straight his back. And he's back on right, the way. McGregor's ball. That was ambitious. Skipworth, I think, the smallest man out there. The shootout, Hudson. And uh, the Crows making some mistakes now. Love it. Murray gives it back to Alvey. Skipworth. And again, McGregor. Jericho coming for a 50. 50 meters. Yeah. A black light for the Dons. It's just got a little black. If you're an Essendon supporter, Tim, you'd be disappointed with the lack of discipline as much as anything else. There are areas of their game that are uh, they're struggling in. That's obvious. But total lack of discipline in the last half an hour of football. Jericho's fourth. Well, it's just, I mean, didn't mean much really in the end, but it, it's just a cheap shot, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, uh, well, other teams see it and they're aware of it and they'll know that this is a team that can be frustrated. And it just disappoints so much Essendon supporters to see their players not give strong contest, give away ridiculous free kicks and just make it so easy for the opposition because they were in this game to the 12th minute mark of the third quarter and from that point on they really haven't given much of a yelp crows have kicked the last nine and the bombers haven't kicked one for over 40 minutes poor bounce allows the crows have a go at it Jason Johnson at the bottom of that, he's over it. And umpire Allen kindly says, I'll bounce. Peril 
He's had a great year, but he's been quiet tonight. Thomas hasn't had much of a go. Cupido's been disappointing. Fletcher injured on the bench for Essendon. Skipworth to Goodwin. Has he got another one? That's number four. Well, without taking anything away from the Adelaide Crows, they've been superb. This is really an embarrassing performance now from Essendon. I mean, they could win by 100 points here, the way it's going. Well, they could, couldn't they? And uh, I just think the spirit goes out of the team when they see uh, undisciplined play from senior players. It's the kind of capitulation that in this professional era has become quite rare. An embarrassment to Essendon. He goes skipworth, and it's easy for him. Who's on the end of it? McGregor again? Not quite. Jericho, Doughty, Thompson. The margin 77 and growing almost by the minute. turning into a dark day in Essendon's history. They're staring at 100 points plus here. On the positive side, the Crows will be looking top four now, the way they're going, at the halfway mark of the year. Into attack again they go. Love it, Murray. Fed it out to McPhee. Looks for Lucas. And he takes the mark. Pumps it long. Bird's there, Johnson's there. Lloyd taps to Hurd from a standing start into the goal square marked by Bassett and he'll waste no time, he's off. McLeod back to Bassett. As the Crows build again. Bock, those young key defenders have done their job. Kill in the way. Free kick to Lloyd. Well, the crowd unhappy enough about that, even under the circumstances of the drubbing they're giving the Bombers to express their disagreement with the umpiring decision. Matthew Lloyd trying to break a long drought. The Bombers haven't kicked one for three quarters of an hour. Throw in half and three quarter time and it's a bit hard to remember it. Long difficult shot for Lloyd who's kicked two for the night. And to the delight of the locals that one fades away and the Bombers limp to 50. Crows play the huddle and away they break. Rutten. Nice kick. And all of a sudden, Adelaide have got it on the wing. McLeod. To half forward. Now is this for quick transition? Perry is going to bomb it long. There's two against one here in favour of Essendon. And subsequently, they went out through McPhee. I reckon he's been their hardest tryer for the night, Adam McPhee. Kicks to Bradley. Heard provides the lead. But instead, he goes to Zantuck. He finds Lucas a long, long way from home. 76 points. Lucas. And the mark's taken by Lovett. Going to come back because it was a mark. This is Lovett's 12th disposal. Five marks.
casually kicks inside 50. Terrible spot to put the ball. And a free kick's going to box. Andrew Lovett's going to be one of those players where if the team's playing well, I think he'll play well. If the team struggles, he'll find it hard because size-wise, he just finds it hard to compete. He needs his team getting plenty of the ball to set him up and uh, on nights like tonight, he will struggle. This is Nathan Van Berlo who came into the team for the injured Scott Welsh. Shirley to Rusciuto, Skipworth, back to Shirley. That's too easy for Adelaide. Thompson, Perry and um, Lovett Murray with Lovett arriving. These stats are in the last 30 minutes of the game. Disposals almost doubled. Kicks doubled. Marks doubled. Handball almost doubled. Inside 50s. All in the last 30 minutes of this contest. Rusciuto. Centre break, 7-1. Kick smothered. To Burton, over to Thompson. Just pops it up to the hot spot. And Lovett Murray takes the mark. So halfway mark of the last term. It's Adelaide by 76. The ball's in the hands of Jason Johnson. Laycock hasn't had any impact tonight. Started the evening on the bench. Limited match time. Neither in the ruck nor in a forward marking role has he been able to make an imprint on the game. Hasn't really gone forward for any appreciable period of time. Aldi. Oh, that's another turnover. Fortunately for the Bombers, Welsh is there to uh, mop up the mess. Back to Aldi. And love it, Murray. Kevin Sheedy throwing them all over the place at the moment. McVeigh. Big lob. Easy for the Adelaide defence. Bassett to Burton. How good one. He'll have two against him. But he has the whip hand. And he's been fouled by McVeigh, so it's another relay ball. They can run on advantage call, and Perry will line them up. Well, the fabric of the Essendon team and playing personnel of the club has just broken down hopelessly in this second half. Perry started on the bench thrown into the fray early, kicked two goals in the first quarter and that's his third of the night as Adelaide go further ahead there's the late push well received by Hudson and he went off and delivered to Perry. McPhee's being dragged for that indiscretion. Goodwin's off with 26 disposals next to his name. There's Kevin Sheedy chatting to McPhee. Okay, Rob, how good are Adelaide? Oh, well, I thought that they would make the eight this year. And uh, I tipped them to be in the eight because I've got great respect for their hard midfield players. And I also had a strong feeling that they really wanted to play for their coach, who has encouraged them to play attacking football within reason. Like, it's not just all out attack. He, he's built this team from the back line. As soon as he took over as coach Neil Craig, he put... Rutten, who'd been at the club for about three years and hardly got a game, he put him straight in at fullback. He put Bock in at centre half back because blokes like Nigel Smart and Ben Hart, well, Nigel Smart's well and truly retired, but Hart's getting towards the end, so he put two kids in at the key defensive positions. He's got Hudson. He doesn't make it obvious that McLeod will play as a midfielder. You never quite know where McLeod will play. Usually starts in the back line. 
and they've experimented with their forward line. There's a chance for the Bombers. It's been a long, long time. Between drinks, Lucas, Stanton, Peveril, into the pocket, Hill, not quite. Matt, a good tackle by Mark Johnson. Matt just threw it on the boot. Stanton again. Oh, that's a good mark taken by Hill, but it's going to be a very acute angle. But they, they've always been strong with their hit outs, the Adelaide Crows, and their clearances. And Hudson's been a real find for them. Bicklands is a good second ruckman. And uh, Welsh, their leading goal kicker, well, he's out. And that's probably their worry, is to have quality key forwards. And Hill has finally broken the 52-minute drought for Essendon. So almost two quarters without a goal. And David Hill gets his second for the evening. The other thing, like, whilst Welsh is their leading goal kicker, and he, and he can be a pretty handy forward, he's been around for a long while, playing with the Kangaroos, of course. You throw in Perry, McGregor and Jericho, and they are pretty handy big forwards. They're, they're not dominant forwards, but they can play some pretty decent football. Solomon back, and wins a clearance for the Bombers. Lucas was pushed, he'll take a free kick. David Hill with James Hurd. Essendon's uh, biggest possession winner tonight. Good performance by the big man. Here's Jason Johnson. But as, but as Mark Aston told us at three-quarter time, the good thing for the Crows is that they've got something like six of their last nine games will be played here at Amy. So I've got every confidence that they'll be playing finals. If the game stopped right now, they'd be second on the ladder. Their percentage currently has edged ahead of Geelong's which was damaged by last night's loss to Collingwood this is a big night for Adelaide they lead by 76 points Mark Johnson might have something to say about that he cuts it to 75 Crows still second Rashuto as I said now the record number of games as captain for the Adelaide Crows 103rd time as captain surpassing Mark Bickley well what two great captains this club's had Thompson's had a great night but put himself down with that kick Bradley oh that's risky he might have kicked the point she James Clement would have been hoping it through Although I think he still has the most embarrassing yeah, line of the yeah, year. It'd be hard to top that one. A chance for the Crows once again. Hudson just ripped it out of the rack. Too easy, isn't Too it? easy. He did it beautifully, though, didn't he? Well, he's up against Kepler Bradley, and in fairness, Bradley uh, hasn't got the strength of body. He's a project player for the Bombers. And the other question I have to ask is, why was Bradley doing the ruck work? Where was David Hill? Ben Hudson ran through Adelaide's 22nd of the night. This was a team that was expected to kick 10 or 11 this evening. Shirley to Thompson. Rusciuto. Jericho. Oh, Hudson again. That was a bit like his namesake, wasn't it? 
Yes, he did it well. Geez, uh, he's been a good pick-up for them. And again, the long kick into the forward line. And look, there's been plenty of times that Essendon's marked it, but uh, with weight and numbers, you send it in. You'll come out on top more times than not. But uh, some big question marks hanging over this Essendon team. And I reckon one player in particular, and that is their captain. And I'm talking about will he go on next year if he thinks this Essendon team's not going to be uh, finals material. Hudson had two career goals before tonight. He's just kicked two more in a minute. Adelaide by 87. the Essendon captain who has played on a number of different opponents during this game. Fresh legs come at him all the time in the shape of Tawny, Shirley, Matna and Goodwin and he's a very proud man, proud footballer and I really do think that he would consider whether it's worthwhile going on if he doesn't believe this Essendon team is capable of doing something uh, out of the ordinary next year. Thank you. Well, they came here with high hopes tonight, and when Scott Welsh was a late withdrawal, their chances firmed even more, and they've had their hearts ripped out tonight. That's not even to mention the Bombers supporters watching right around Australia. But the Crows have been fantastic, and here they come again. Biglands inside 50. Mark Johnson mops up for Essendon. Two bounces. Doing it all himself. Inside 50. It's all Adelaide. There's five of them there. As Bassett takes it. And kicks it out to Riley. There's a good point, Quarters. We shouldn't uh, forget how brilliant the Crows have been. There's a, a tendency, I think, and probably uh, well-placed to be critical of the Bombers because it has been a, a terrible capitulation in the second half. But Adelaide have been brilliant. And doubt he might just add to the damage here, but only to the tune of one behind. They lead by 88 points, their biggest ever win over Essendon, 96 points back in 1996. And there's the skipper who's running himself ragged. Last 27 games, they've won six last quarters. It is a damning stat. Stanton goes all the way back to Zantuck. To Hurd. And he finds Lucas. Rob, Hurd will be 33 when next season starts. Uh, given what you're saying, do you think he should go on? Look, it's entirely up to him, Tim, but I think he's the sort of bloke who he wants to play football because he wants to be part of uh, premierships. That, that's the driving force. Uh, I don't think he plays football just for the sake of playing football. He's done all that. And if he believes that this team can't do something pretty special... I think there are other things that he wants to do in his life, and he might say, well, I'm 33, got a young family, I've, I've played in a couple of premiership teams for Essendon, captained the team for five or six years, whatever it might be. He may well believe that it is the time for him to step aside. And still playing at his top. And still playing at his top. And, and look, he's had some dreadful injuries over the journey, and he might just think, well, look, I've had enough. And you couldn't blame him for that. All Adelaide again. Bassett decides not to mark, but he smashes it. It's come off beautifully. McLeod didn't get the kindness of bounces, but backing him up is Matner. Look at the pace. He runs through the midfield. He squeezes it out wide. Chance for a couple more for the Crows. Biglands bangs it long. It's going to be close. It's home. It's another one for Adelaide. Nine goal kickers. The big question now is, can they make it 100 points? Well, the amazing thing is it's 14 goals to one in the second half. And bear in mind that we went 13 minutes in the third quarter, at the start of the third quarter, without either team kicking a goal.
shattering night this for Essendon. Absolutely shattering. March of 94, the Crows were a goal away from their biggest ever win over the Dons. They came to this night the third lowest scoring team in the comp. Only Port Adelaide and Sydney had scored fewer points. Tonight they've kicked 24 goals. Gone yet. 24 goals, 7. Right which is pretty in. extraordinary. Love it, Murray. That's a lovely long kick. Magnificent kick. Fine goal. Fine goal greeted by stony silence. Save just a few boos. Oh, they're mean spirited, aren't they? save Essendon from its worst ever loss to Adelaide, you would think. That matters little. It's a horrible shellacking. 88 points the margin. Amazing amount of stats racked up by the Adelaide midfield. Goodwin, 26. Rusciuto, 26. McLeod, 25. Thompson, 25. And Matty Lloyd, two touches in the second half. For that to Essendon, Heard 24, and Hill is their second leading disposal getter with 22. As the Bombers work it forward again. They'll get another consolation goal. Bit of soccer played by Bassett, did it beautifully. Bot to Rutten, to Jericho. And Thompson. He's you, been good. Hasn't he become, I was going to say, become a good player. I think he was a good player with Melbourne. 88 points. Positives, and this is a massive win by the Adelaide Crows, and they will well and truly have their sights set on the top four when it comes to September. Let's go down to a man who now holds a record for the most number of games skipped by the Crows, Mark Rusciuto. And I reckon he's got a bit of a smile on his face, haven't he? Well, the uh, lost to uh, Mark Rusciuto there, I think the... Uh, yes, and they're fighting for their season, but uh, we got out on top in the first quarter. We haven't done that for a while, and that really set it up. That's the highest score this uh, this season for Adelaide. Yeah, like uh, we've been accused of being an ugly side, but uh, we know what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to move the ball quick, and uh, probably our forward lines have copped of, uh, a fair bit of criticism, criticism as well. Get that out. But uh, tonight we got it all together and got the big score. And Kenny McGregor has been fantastic, hasn't he? Yeah, we always knew Kenny was a good forward, but we've had to play him down back for the last couple of years. But. Uh, uh, we've put him up forward, uh, he's taken a couple of grabs and kicking a few goals, so it's excellent. You haven't got the same cold that Welshie's got. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, Welshie uh, rolled out of the flu today, but uh, uh, it was good. We've got a bit of depth in our side now, we could cover him, so good. Good luck next week against the Cap. Thanks, Mark. Adelaide's percentage has gone from 114 to 124. Mm -hmm. Right at this minute, they're second on the ladder. And they deserve to be too, because uh, they work for each other. They're tough in close, they're desperate. And they're prepared to, as Mark Rusciuto said, move the ball on quickly to get it in their forward line. Their forward 50 entries were, were plentiful. And uh, they're prepared to back themselves with their marks. And their defence, gee, do they work hard there. And veterans like Goodwin, he is an absolute beauty. Scott Thompson, gee, has he come on since leaving?